Welcome back everyone to another brand new episode in this Brighton FIFA 23 career mode. As we enter the final rundown towards the end of the season, embarking on an unlikely title challenge that's going down to the wire. But whilst morale is high having not sporting Lisbon out of the Europa League, that momentum could be about to come to a crashing halt as we have been drawn against Manchester City in the quarterfinals. So with morale high and excitement coursing through the veins of the Brighton faithful, we have a lot to get through this episode. And of course, if you are enjoying the series so far, please feel free to like and subscribe and let's get into it. Now despite being top of the table and through to the knockout rounds of the Europa League, my captain Mark Gay has still come knocking on my door telling me that he doesn't think the squad is motivated enough as we aren't achieving our potential. And I'll be honest, I've got absolutely no idea what to say to him because how on earth is being top of the Premier League table with just nine games remaining not meeting our potential? And we've got some of the best players in the league all plying their trade at Brighton Football Club. What more can one man expect? So in a bid to try and knock some sense into the young man, I've decided to drop him for our next game against Burnley, which clearly was the right thing to do as we have thumped them 3-0 away from home and we get another clean sheet without him. And me putting him back in his place was clearly what he needed as he's contributed with a goal in the seventh minute as he's helped us along to another 3-0 win, this time at home to Fulham. Not only that, but he's also come knocking on my door to offer an apology and to say that he respects the decision and that the dressing room is a much happier place. I'm glad it's all worked out and for me, it's panic over in the rundown towards the end of the season. But in our first leg Europa League clash against Manchester City, our winning momentum comes to a halt as thanks to an early goal from Haaland, a late one from Wimmer is only able to rescue us a draw. However, with a much rotated team, we do still manage to maintain our winning streak in the Premier League as we go back to the Amex Stadium and beat Chelsea 2-1 courtesy of goals from Adingra and Jeremy Pino. It is finally time though for the biggest game in Brighton Football Club's history. As I face the press and try and rally the troops to give us that last little bit of belief that we need in order to get ourselves through to the next round. It's no doubt that there are some nerves in the Brighton camp, both from the players and the fans, but we will be relying on this man, Evan Ferguson, with his eight Europa League goals so far this season to try and drag us through to the semi-final. In the full knowledge that if he can do that, we have just then gone and beaten the toughest opposition we're likely to face in this competition, and surely that will fill us with confidence that we can go one step further and win the whole thing. Calvin Phillips for City. Into Musiala is now applying his trade in Manchester. He's going to try and look to go out wide. He does. Haaland gets it inside the box. Mark Gay trying to put a challenge in. It's a big save from the goalkeeper. Early doors here inside the opening 10 minutes. But Evan Ferguson just couldn't find the right pass. Patrick Vimmer will pick it up though. And he will continue his drive. And he will try and drive down this right-hand side. He checks inside though. Looking for Ludovic Blas. He cuts back. Looking for Harvey Barnes. And he's inches away there from getting his head on it. Musiala for City. That's a Phil Foden on the right-hand side. He cuts back in. Oh, that's a perfect pinpoint pass to Musiala and he goes past Mark Gay like he's not even there drives into the penalty area oh it's just too good for Manchester City they carve us apart and Haaland of course who else is it going to be is on hand to just volley it into the back of the net to give Manchester City a 1-0 lead but it was all too easy Mark Gay caught out of position by Musiala and then Haaland was on hand to do the rest unmarked inside the penalty area and when you leave that man unmarked you know what the outcome is going to be. It's naive from us, but it's brilliant football from Manchester City. And it's 1-0 here at the Etihad. Vimmer inside, trying to get involved in the game. Finds Ludovic Blas into a Stupinian. A Stupinian to Harvey Barnes. Back to a Stupinian. He finds Manuel Ugarte. Manuel Ugarte turns, find Evan Ferguson, and he just cannot strike in time. Haaland, though, releases Phil Foden. And look at the space on the counter-attack that the young Englishman has. He's got into the box. He fired a strike just high and wide. Benzema is on hand here with his European experience to try and offer some tactical advice. But so far, it just isn't working for us. Musiala, nice play to get away from Ugarte. And he continues his run. But Mark Gay makes a mentor earlier. And he's taken out there by Musiala. But that will leave a space now that we can try and counter-attack into. As Estupinian brings the ball forward. He doesn't have too many options. But he does eventually find Ludovic Blas. Ludovic Blas into Patrick Wimmer with his left. Oh, Edison with a brilliant save. But I think he may have just strayed offside. Bernardo Silva into Erling Haaland. Erling Haaland challenged well by Roger Ibanez. Brilliant stuff here as Ludovic Blas releases Evan Ferguson. Evan Ferguson to drive into the box. Doesn't have many options. Instead, I'm going to check back to Harvey Barnes. He strikes with his right. Another big save from Edison. Can we get onto the loose ball? Yes, we can with Vimmer. Into Gertruda. Gertruda in two. I think it was Koku and he struck. And Edison was on hand yet again. Erkin Koku to take the resulting corner. Looks for the smallest man on the pitch in Jeremy Pino on as a sub. And he just headers it over the bar. Unlucky from him. Haaland. 
into Musiala. Less than five minutes remaining here for us to try and get a goal. But at the moment, it's looking like Manchester City are going to be the more likely to score it. As Haaland's in the box here, that is not where you want him. Eventually, we do manage to get the challenge in. Patrick Wimmer away, but he's being harassed and hassled by Jack Grealish. Ibanez into Verbruggen. Verbruggen over to Estupinian, and it's not the best ball under panic. It's going to be Haaland with the free kick here. We are well over the allotted stoppage time. He goes short, as you would expect him to do. But he plays it into the box, and Manchester City just toying with us here. Jeremy Pino will win it, though. I'm going to try and release Evan Ferguson. It is not enough as the referee blows for full time. Look at the Manchester City fans. They are ecstatic. The players are ecstatic. They know what it means. Pep Guardiola knows what it means. He's a man with European experience, and he's used that European experience today very wisely. Erling Haaland, of course, the goal scorer. Who else would it be? As at full time here at the Etihad, it finishes Manchester City 1, Brighton 0. Well, that was a really tough one to take because I've now got to face up to the media. But for me, I think we did really well across both legs, particularly today. But it just wasn't meant to be. We tried and we tried and we tried to knock the door down, but we just couldn't break it. Manchester City were solid at the back. We weren't solid enough. And when you give Haaland that much time and space in the area, you will be punished. It's naive from us, but hopefully it's something we'll learn from. It's a frustrating one, though, as my status with the board has now gone down to weak, as we have failed in our objective to reach the Europa League final. And whilst it seems like morale is still very happy, I am just hoping that is not going to have a knock-on effect to our title challenge with just six games remaining. But frustratingly, it looks like it has. A late goal in the second half from Everton has seen them take away the three points. And it's a loss for us at the worst possible time. But after fighting back with a 2-1 win at home, courtesy of goals from Ludovic Blas and Harvey Barnes against Leeds United, we are then left frustrated by West Ham as we can only do enough to secure a 2-2 draw. And in fact, we got very lucky in the 89th minute with them missing a penalty. And with those results having a knock-on effect to our league form, dragging us down to third place in the table, now five points behind Manchester United, but with a game in hand, we are now ready to welcome a team who are in that title hunt against us to the Amex Stadium as Liverpool rock up in what is definitely the biggest game of the season and an absolute must win. If we do not win it, our title dreams are over. McAllister goes short again to Mo Salah and this time he just flings it straight across. But it's well headed away by Mark Gay and it's headed away by Ludovic Blas. Only as far as Ramsey though. McAllister again has it. A lovely, brilliant pass into the box. Oh my word, we've been taken apart here inside the opening 10 minutes by Cody Gakpo. Well, he points to the heavens because he knows how big that goal was. A brilliant, incisive piece of play from Liverpool. They just cut through my defence like a knife through butter. And Cody Gakpo was there ahead of Bart Verbruggen who just couldn't get out in time. And he smashed it into the back of the net to give Liverpool an early 1-0 lead. Harvey Barnes trying to get away from Mo Salah. How on earth is that not a red card, let alone a foul? What on earth is going on, referee here? Ibanez comes across to block off the challenge from McAllister. Mo Salah drives past to Stupinian, does really well, looking to try and get a ball into the box. He does for Cody Gakpo. How on earth are Liverpool still playing this? Jude Bellingham strikes, but Verbruggen saves. But I am still outraged that I didn't get an earlier foul. Koku under a bit of pressure here, trying to wriggle away from the Liverpool press, and he does a really good job of doing so. And he releases Gertruder down the right-hand side. Nice ball into back. Patrick Wimmer, he finds Ludovic Blas. Patrick Wimmer, uh, sorry, Ludovic Blas across to Harvey Barnes. Harvey Barnes into the box, looking for an option behind him. Finds Ugarte, who strikes. It's bouncing around like a pinball, and eventually it's headed clear by the Liverpool uh, players. Ludovic Blas strikes again, and this time he balloons it over the bar, and he knows how important that opportunity was. Gordon. Lovely ball into the path of Cody Gakpo. They're just playing those balls into the channel so far in this game. And they've done a really good job of doing so. But we did a very good job of defending that one. And now, what a pass. That is arguably one of the best passes I've seen all game. Ludovic Blast to drive into the box. Can I try and get the cut back to Evan Ferguson? Yes, I can. And Evan Ferguson draws us level here at the Amex Stadium. Well, that was all from the pass down the right-hand side. And Ludovic Blast had the pace to drive into the box. And the awareness to just cut it back to Evan Ferguson. And that young man is on fire this season he smashed it past Allison there gave him no chance into the top left hand corner Klopp knows that was a big big mistake from Liverpool and Evan Ferguson celebrates for his 16th Premier League goal this season Morton over the top into Mo Salah nice pass into him Mo Salah going to try and get it across but a stupid Yan blocks but it's still in there to the edge of the box strikes from distance Morton made a big hash of that one. Well, it's end-to-end -end stuff here at the Amex Stadium, but at the beginning of the second half, we've got 45 minutes 
to try and find a winner. Both of these teams do, because if neither team is able to win it, a draw is not enough. Both of them will be out of the title challenge as Estupinian tries to bring the ball forward and does a really nice job of doing so. He finds Evan Ferguson. Evan Ferguson's dropped deep. Back to Estupinian. I'm just trying to find the right angle here. Yugate twisting, turning. Finds Harvey Barnes. Going to try and throw it across to Vlodovic Blas. Couldn't quite reach him. It's headed down though and away from Liverpool. Gertruda into Koku, finds Vimmer, really nicely done there, and Vimmer, I'm going to try and play it into the channel, into Evan Ferguson, that is a perfect ball, Evan Ferguson is blocked off by Alisson, good save, Garte into Ludovic Blas, Ludovic Blas tries to find a Stupinian on the left hand side, it's a really good ball, the Stupinian's going to try and dink this one over, looking for Evan Ferguson, can't find him again, it's headed down though, only as far as Patrick Vimmer, Patrick Vimmer under a bit of pressure here, going to try and play this all the way over to an unmarked Stupinian on the left hand side, Nicely done. He's got the time to pick out a ball. It's a decent ball, but yet again, we just can't seem to get our heads on it. We do still manage to keep the ball alive, but has the momentum gone? Mark Gay is going to try and fire it back across, and it's a poor ball in the end that Liverpool can now try and press us, but well won by Roger Ibanez. Stupinian into Harvey Barnes, who's unmarked. Into Ludovic Blas. Ludovic Blas back to Harvey Barnes. Really nicely done here. He drives into the box. Can he try and find the cutback? Doesn't need it. Instead, he goes right across the six-yard box to Evan Ferguson, who is again in the right place at the right time. Look at this. We just carved Liverpool apart. They were left completely open at the back, and Harvey Barnes drove into the box, and Evan Ferguson was yet again on hand to fire into an empty net and to give us a 2-1 lead, much to Klopp's dismay. Robertson with the throw, just about five minutes remaining in this game for Liverpool to try and find an equaliser. Marino into the box and what a big save that was from Bart Verbruggen. Mo Salah will take the results in corner though. They've got everyone up here, it's thrown into the box, headed away by the substitute to Hood. Only as far as Mo Salah, oh brilliant turn to get away from my defenders. Cuts it back, looks for Jude Bellingham, nicely done from Liverpool on the edge of my box. They're still in here. Barbara Bruggen to the rescue again. Everyone, including Allison, is in my penalty area for Liverpool. It's thrown in just on the edge of the six-yard box, headed away by Roger Ibanez. Only as far as Jude Bellingham. A Dingra will try and smash this one away. He doesn't get the job done. Coker will smash it away, though. And surely, referee, you have to blow the whistle now. Unfortunately enough, he does do just that. What a huge win. We know, my players know just how big that was. That has kept us in the title challenge for the rest of the season. Evan Ferguson, my word, he stepped up to the plate when I needed him to. His two goals are the difference here today. As at full time it finishes, Brighton 2, Liverpool 1. But we showed fantastic character to come from 1-0 down, especially just being absolutely bombarded in the opening 10-15 minutes of that game. And it means with just two games remaining in the Premier League, there is just two points separating us and Manchester United. And after managing to absolutely smash three past Wolves as we've beaten them 3-0, courtesy of goals from Ludovic Glass, Harvey Barnes and Gertruda, it means with just one game remaining in the Premier League, we are level on points with Manchester United. As you can see on the right-hand side, they have Newcastle at Old Trafford. We have Brentford away from home. And this is the moment against one of our rivals in the Premier League, a team who I'm sure will be absolutely delighted to put a dent in our title challenge. But if we are going to do it, I'm going to need my players like Evan Ferguson to step up to the plate today as we head to the GTEC Community Stadium for the biggest game of the entire career mode as we face Brentford in the last game of the season. The objective here is very simple. We have to win. We've got to beat Manchester United's result against Newcastle that we won't know until the end of the game. So it's absolutely simple. Just get three points, get the job done, and hopefully that will be enough to seal the Premier League title for us. Evan Ferguson dropped deep, picked up a really nice pocket of space. Harvey Barnes into Ugarte. Ugarte shifts it onto his right. Oh my word, Ugarte inches away there from a sensational goal on the last day of the season. Look at the replay here. Just shifted it onto his right. And he curled it around the goalkeeper. He was so close there and don't I know it. Damsgaard into the box. Nicely done. Oh, big save again from Verbruggen. Going to be Damsgaard with the resulting corner here and he's going to fire it across. Looking for a Brentford player, but it's headed away well. Only out as far as Jan out. They're going to get a second opportunity here for Damsgaard to try and throw it back in. Instead, he cuts to the edge of the box. Jan out this time has it for Brentford. They are in search of their goal as we just bring it out. And Verbruggen, fortunately enough, came running out, rushing out in front of the player and was able to put a stop to that attack. Vimmer. Oh, wonderful pass over to Estupinian, and he's taken that beautifully into Harvey Barnes. I'm going to try and look for the overlapping run here, but Harvey Barnes doesn't need it. Instead, he tries to find Ugarte, and Ugarte just can't get on the end of that one. 
Dam's guard down the left hand side being chased down by Gertruda but does a really nice job oh that is sensational he's just skilled past two of my players oh my word that was a massive opportunity for Brentford how on earth did they not take that one but the ball and the move is still alive here it's De Silva to strike from distance and he sends that one well wide well you can tell there are definitely some nerves here in the Brighton camp as we have not played particularly well in this first half. We've only really had the one opportunity from Ugarte early doors but Ludovic Blast to try and play it across to Evan Ferguson. He heads it down to Harvey Barnes. Harvey Barnes to strike from distance and it's just over the bar. It did get a deflection though so it will be a corner that Koku's going to take. It's a decent corner, not decent enough. Headed away only to Harvey Barnes. Koku will now get a second chance to throw it in. He does that. It's back in. Again headed away. We just can't seem to get on the end of these ones. Roger Ibanez into Harvey Barnes. He finds Koku. Koku back to Harvey Barnes. Harvey Barnes back to Koku. Koku to strike. Straight at the goalkeeper as the referee blows for half time. And as we take a look at the results around the grounds at half time, you will see that Manchester United have taken a 1-0 lead against Newcastle which makes it even more important that we try and desperately find a goal in the second half here. Barnes into Evan Ferguson. Evan Ferguson almost taken out there but he's managed to retain the ball and that is a brilliant ball across to Patrick Vimmer. Into Ludovic Blast to strike. Another big save from the goalkeeper. Williams. Nice pass into Ndiaye. He strikes from distance. And it's well wide as well from Brentford. Neither team can find the shooting boots today. Stooping Yan down this left hand side. Cuts inside. Nicely done. Finds Harvey Barnes. Harvey Barnes finds a ball back to a Stooping Yan. This is really nicely worked here. A Stooping Yan tried to play it across. It just wasn't a good enough ball. Can we keep the ball alive? No, we can't. It's going to be Jafino with the throw in right inside our half here. Jafino gets it back. To Jan out on the edge of the box. It's indeed he was well challenged by Ugarte. Now it's time. We have to try and strike a counter attack here. And we have to make this count. It's a beautiful ball into Harvey Barnes. Harvey Barnes into Evan Ferguson. The man I want in this place at the right time. And Evan Ferguson makes Brentford pay. Well, he celebrates wildly because he knows how important that goal was with just 15 minutes remaining. The counter attack was lethal. Brentford, no defenders anywhere to be seen. And when Harvey Barnes gave the ball to Evan Ferguson, I knew there was only going to be one outcome. He was calm, composed, as he always is. And he just slotted it past the goalkeeper to get us back in this title race. The fail into Erkin Koku. Nicely done. Koku into Ludovic Blas. Ludovic Blas puts the game to bed. It's a fantastically well-worked goal from all the Brighton players. And they celebrate wildly. Do they know something that I don't know? Even I'm up celebrating. What on earth is going on here at the GTEC Stadium? Well, it was just brilliantly worked. Look at how incisive it was. We cut through Brentford with ease. He smashed it into the top left-hand corner. It means we will be taking home the three points. But it's the all-important question. Is it enough? to win the title for Brighton Football Club. Well, the referee blows the whistle as I shake the hand of the Brentford manager, Thomas Frank, as we wait in hope to find out what the final Manchester United score will be as full-time here it finishes Brentford nil, Brighton 2. But frustratingly, in spite of the win and the clean sheet against Brentford, it just wasn't meant to be. Manchester United are crown Premier League champions, having beaten us on goal difference, having scored five more goals than us across the course of the season. That is heartbreaking. I thought we had enough firepower with the likes of Evan Ferguson scoring 18 Premier League goals and 31 goals across all competitions, but it just wasn't enough. Harvey Barnes chipped in with 16 Premier League goals and 20 in all competitions, as well as nine assists. Ludovic Blast with 14 goals and four assists. And Patrick Wimmer with 12 goals and eight assists as well. Even Jeremy Pino chipped in with five goals and three assists. And even Karim Benzema chipped in with five goals. Four of them coming in the Premier League. But it, unfortunately, it still wasn't enough for Brighton Football Club to be crowned Premier League champions. But despite for some reason my status with the board being weak, we have, however, smashed our target of reaching a Champions League place. And I've just got to hope that heading into next season, we will be given another mammoth European-sized budget that we can make one or two game-changing signings with, whom hopefully can lead us to Premier League and European glory. But that is it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the episode and the series so far. If you have, please feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you again next time.